The Joe Biden story shows how the media lies to you all the time, non-stop. I'll explain why in a moment, but let me give you some background. The COVID-19 pandemic woke me up. It made no sense that Western democracies were adopting the unproven Chinese Communist Party policy of lockdowns in what proved to be a disastrously failed experiment to stop a bad virus. It made no sense that children who faced no mortal threat from COVID or indeed serious symptoms were locked out of schools and playgrounds. It made no sense that our faces were masked with filthy, flimsy devices whose holes were between 500 and 1,000 times larger than the virus itself. And whilst the media's job is to probe and question government policy, during the pandemic, all the main TV channels and newspapers rolled over to government ministers, serving as propaganda outlets to sell what, in my view, proved to be a doomed policy. Look at no lockdown, no mask mandate Sweden, who boast the lowest excess deaths in Europe, including their Scandinavian neighbours. Some people still believe all of it, like those poor souls still wandering around in the park with a mask on. We'll probably never get those people back. Well, we're seeing the same thing now with climate change. Now, I'm concerned about the planet, and it's clearly heating up with devastating consequences. I'm pushing for what I call smart net zero, which takes into account the economy, the will of the people and evidence-based science. If you're asking me to bin my perfectly good 15-year-old Prius, you better tell me why and back it up with the numbers. But as with COVID, the media is fueling hysteria around the issue of climate with some TV and radio networks and newspapers profiting from revenue from green industries by telling you that the earth will have burnt down by next Tuesday. And high profile broadcasters and journalists earn brownie points from their elite peers by signaling their virtue and backing this questionable war on fossil fuels, with international energy expert Gary Lineker this week applauding Ed Miliband's plan to reduce oil and gas exploration in the North Sea. Of course, these wealthy celebrities will be insulated from the inevitable cost of the so-called Green Revolution, and politics, uh, politicians like Ed Miliband will be long out of power if and when this wild plan to bet the House on flaky renewables proves to be a costly mistake. You can sense the media's current disappointment that the UK has had a relatively cool and wet summer because it deprives them of selling their message of climate Armageddon. A cool July doesn't really fit the narrative, does it? But don't you worry, once those temperatures pick up, you'll be seeing those mad red weather maps which are there to give you the impression that the country is basically on fire rather than what we used to call summer. Those TV weather maps used to be light yellow in colour with the same temperatures that we've got now, but now they're a dark crimson red. That, in my view, is propaganda. It is manipulation and it's dishonest. They think you're stupid. So whether it's COVID or climate, the template of exaggeration, obfuscation and downright lies on the part of our media establishment has been set. And we've seen it most recently in relation to poor old Joe Biden, who should be sat in a care home with a cup of tea, watching reruns episodes of The Golden Girls, thinking about when to have his next piss, not sitting in the Oval Office leading the free world. And yet, media commentators in the United States were telling us just weeks ago that Biden is at the height of his powers, whip smart, as sharp as he's ever been. What a pack of lies. Even our new prime minister did it this week in Washington, with Sakir Starmer claiming that Biden is not senile and not too old to be president. In fact, according to the PM, apparently he's on great form. Do me a favor. Is this great form? And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be Vice President, but I think she was not qualified to be President. So let's start there. 
It's been clear for a while that Biden was not mentally fit for high office. I've been saying it since 2020 on my old talk radio show. But the media have covered this up, making mugs of all of us. But it's useful as it shows you how they work and what to look out for. Never forget that great line from George Orwell's book about government control, 1984. The party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. It was their final, most essential command. These days, if you want the truth, you'll struggle to find it on television, on the radio or in newspapers. Is it any wonder that establishment media is in terminal decline?